So OS result or out of specification result is always at the center of any investigation. And investigator want to understand how the company has carried out an investigation to identify the root cause. Because the root cause can help organization to mitigate such kind of future observations to improvise onto the systems and the processes. But in case if the root cause behind the OS is not identified, in that case, how company can proceed with the batch release. Hi, my name is Bhaskar Napte and I am the founder of Pharma Growth Hub and I help pharmaceutical professionals to get an absolute clarity on such a critical and important topic. So as a part of today's video, we will try to understand when the additional or retesting is proposed and accepted and how many number of preparations can be conducted during such kind of retesting or additional testing. And what are the statistical evaluation one has to consider while deciding on to the batch release or disposition. So let us begin with the presentation. The first point that you have now uh, locked an OS and you have started an investigation. Now in case if the root cause of the uh, identif if the root cause of the OS is not identified, what you're supposed to do? How long you are going to keep on investigating the root cause? So the very important question you need to ask that when to go for additional or the retesting. I'm just talking about the reference taken from the UK MHRA presentation. And according to this one presentation, you will find that the additional testing or the uh, retesting can be conducted If no assignable cause that could explain the results can be identified during the manufacturing investigation or the assay failure investigation, retesting may be considered. The guidance says that in case if you are not successful in identifying the root cause, in that situation, organization can decide to go for the retesting or which is also called as the additional testing. Now the second important question is, what is meant by retesting? The retesting is nothing but the uh, remeasurement. I mean, you can make the same sample again with the similar kind of the testing procedures for more number of preparations and then try to understand whether the results are meeting the specification or not. That is all about the retesting. The second important questions you need to understand and answer how many remeasurements or how many retestings you are going to conduct. So in case if you want to have the regulatory reference for this number of preparations, you can see on the same guidance on the same page that five, seven or nine preparations are suggested by some of the literatures. Now this is just the guidance. That doesn't mean you have to just follow the same number of remeasurements, five, seven or nine. The guidance say that the number of retest should be statistically valid. Now the statistically valid term is very important and that also gives uh, the flexibility on number of preparations. So how the statistical uh, validity can be assessed and this can be assessed based on to your validation data. So you must have conducted repeatability or intermediate precision during the validation. And there must be some parameters of evaluation like standard deviation or percent RSD. So how many preparations you have made during conducting the repeatability? So that can be your beginning, the original point on discussing the number of preparations. And the percent RSD can be your acceptance criteria as, as per as the, uh, the spread between these uh, all remeasurements are concerned. So 
The third important point, as we understand about uh, how many number of re-measurements needs to be considered, the third important point is about uh, statistical evaluation. So how one can define that the, the, the results are not statistically different from one another. And again, here is the reference, the percent RSC can be calculated and the reference document can be your validation document. How one can define the percent uh, acceptance criteria for the percent RST that can be your validation document. In continuation to the percent RST, the same image array guideline talks about evaluation of 95% confidence limit. So 95% confidence limit also needs to be understand and you must confirm that uh, the upper value and the lower value, I mean, once you calculate the 95% confidence limit, you will always get the two values. One is at the upper side and another one is at the lower side. So whatever these values, these values should not outside your defined specification. Now, to make you clear on this particular concept, we will take one simple example. But before I go on to the example, let me also make you very clear that many organizations, according to my knowledge and information, follows this 2 plus 4 approach. Now, what is this 2 plus 4 approach? You can think of conducting the re-measurement, retesting or additional testing by the second analyst. And the second analyst can make the duplicate preparations or two re-measurements. And if there is a need of conducting the analysis by, analysis by the original analyst, then that analyst can prepare the four, uh, some four measurements. So that is all about two plus four approach. So how this approach work? See, now once you conclude that there is no root cause identified, both by analytical lab and both by manufacturing site, please understand that the additional testing can only be conducted once the entire investigation from laboratory site and manufacturing site is completed and concluded by saying no root cause or unknown root cause. In that situation, you are going to conduct the additional testing and the 2 plus 4 is the approach that you are discussing with this particular slide. So who should begin the uh, additional testing? whether the original analyst shall start the preparation or shall the second analyst make the uh, beginning of the additional testing plan. So as per as uh, the most of the industry practices, the additional testing always gets started with the second analyst. And this is as, as a cautious that in case if you begin the additional testing with the original analyst, Original analyst may try to uh, generate the result into the compliance or testing into compliance that we call that uh, particular uh, effort. So to avoid this testing into compliance and to have the unbiased result, beginning the additional testing with the second analyst is always preferred. So this is the given point. And this is the, uh, the chart I would like to explain one by one. So you will completely understand how this additional testing program can be executed. The first and foremost, you have to determine number of re-measurements or retest in an additional testing protocol. And for any given point, this number of preparations cannot be decreased or cannot be increased. That is the fix. So two plus four, that is number of preparations are six now. So you are going to begin with the second analyst and how many retests are going to conduct it by the second analyst? Two retests or the two re-measurements. And there could be two possibilities. The first possibility was I will talk about if all these two retest results are meeting the specification. Now what this indicates? That means whatever results you got with the original analyst, and by the second analyst, they are not one and the same. 
the result of the second analyst is not in the agreement with the original analyst result. Now to challenge the finding by the second analyst, the original analyst can conduct the rigorous amount of testing. And that's where the four retests can be conducted by the original analyst. Now, why more number of preparations? Because this will also give extra confidence to the analyst himself or herself and also to the quality unit that there are enough number of remeasurements done by the original analyst. And in case if all results are passes, in case if all results are passes by the original analyst, then you have to conduct the statistical evaluation. We talked about percent RST, we talked about confidence limit, 95% uh, confidence limit evaluation. So that is about the conducting the statistical evaluation. Now what is possibility? When you conduct the statistical evaluation, the statistical evaluation could be a satisfactory, means percent RST is meeting your validation requirement. So whatever values you got during this uh, 2 plus 4, 6 measurement is still meeting your acceptance criteria for the precision study, for example. In that situation, you can release the batch. QA may take a stand on releasing the batch. But again, just this uh, 2 plus 4 remeasurements alone will not be considered for releasing the batch. QA will also consider the history of the product maybe from the product development, process validation, stability study. What is the trend for this particular product? Are there any market complaint received for this product? So in case if there is no any significant market complaint, significant product issues, QA can certainly go with the batch release. Let us talk about the situation where the statistical evaluation is unsatisfactory. The statistical evaluation says that the product may not be consistent in the product quality. In that situation, the QA may reject the batch. And while rejection, QA should also look at the history of the product. Now, this is the first possible situation. All four results by original analyst has made the specification. Let us now talk about there are four retests conducted by the original analyst and for some reason all of them are not meeting the specification. See, the two retests conducted by the second analyst were meeting the spec. Original result was out of the spec and when these four retests were conducted by the original analyst, you got the failure in the specification. In that case, QA may reject the batch. And again, in case of whether rejecting the batch or releasing the batch, QA has to think about the product history. So this is all about uh, the first situation where the all the results from the second analyst were meeting the specification. Now there could be the second possibility that not all results are meeting the spec. I'm talking about the second analyst two retesting and maybe one or two uh, results are out of the spec. In that situation, you need not to conduct the retesting by the original analyst. Why? Because the result of the second analyst is actually in agreement with the original analyst's result. Both the results are in agreement, isn't it? And for that reason, you can stop the additional testing plan and QA may reject the batch. So this is all about two plus four approach. There is a very important point I wanted to reiterate over here. And it's a cautious note. An assay result that is low, but within the specification should also raise a concern. Let us say you have a specification of 90 to 110 percent. I'm talking about a drug product, for example. So if you, so if your results for assay is consistently close to 90 percent, like 90.5, 91 percent, in that case, you have to think about whether the batch can be rejected or the released because your batch may not meet the predefined stability specification if there is a drop in the assay found during the stability study. 
So that is very important point. And same can be applicable for the related substances as well. In case if you are finding the result very close to the upper side, very close to the uh, related substances specification, your product may fail for the related substances or a stability study. That is very important point and many company also consider the batch which is released in the additional testing for the stability study. Let us take an example of an APIA and uh, I'm talking about the assay result now. So the original result was out of the spec and then there was no root cause identified and then the quality unit has decided to go for the additional testing or the retesting. As you know, 2 plus 4 plan is followed and uh, the second analyst has conducted uh, two remeasurements and both the results are meeting the space specification. Uh, I forgot to mention about the spec over here, but please assume that the specification for this product for assay is 98.02102.0. So with this specification, the both the values for second analyst meet the spec. Then the original analyst has to conduct has to conduct now four preparations and she or she has prepared four preparations and found within the specification. So then the mean of six is calculated. Then the standard deviation and percent RSD of the six uh, measurements have been calculated. And let us assume that this percent RSD is within your predefined acceptance criteria according to a method precision requirement. Maybe should be less than 2% or something like that. The second important step according to UKMHRA's uh, OS guideline, you have to calculate the lower 95% confidence limit and upper 95% confidence limit. So what is required to calculate that? So this is the calculation formula for the confidence limit. You need to have the sample mean, you can see over here. You need to understand the student T value at 95% confidence interval uh, into sample standard deviation and divided by square root of N and N stand for the sample size or number of measurement. So we have the sample mean which is 99.9%. Uh, we can get the student T value at 95%. Uh, uh, you can also understand there is a standard deviation calculated which is 1.3 for this uh, example and the n which is number of measurements for this case it is 6. So if you look at the, the student t table given into the UK MHRS guideline you will find there are t95 percent values given for the number of measurements. So how many number of measurements are made in this example? Six number of measurements, two by second analyst and four by the original analyst. So six number of measurement has a 2.57 as a standard T value at 95% confidence interval. So once you calculate this confidence limit, you will find that the 98.5% uh, is the lower 95 confidence limit and 101.3% is the upper 95% confidence uh, limit. So does this value, both the values are within the specification of this particular API and here is the spec now. The spec is what 98 to 102%. And you can easily understand that the, the lower 95% confidence limit and the upper 95% confidence limit, both of them are within the specification. And hence, you can decide to release the batch. So this is the way you can uh, evaluate the uh, result by using statistical tools like percent RSG and confidence limit. And you will be able to decide on to the batch. So thank you so much for your attention and I would like to read your comment on this topic. Let me know your thought on this topic in the comment below. Bye-bye.